Good morning, modern steaders. I think it's the calm before the storm. We're supposed to get up to 12 inches of snow today. Should make for an interesting video tomorrow. It's supposed to be later on, so that's gonna be fun. Let's get back inside. We hit 20,000 subscribers today. We wanted to thank all the modern steaders for that. This is our Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we went through all the emails that we signed up. We took them off our email collector, put them in order of how they got collected. We have 1,501 of them. They're all numbered. We don't want to put all of the emails into a computerized generator because we don't want them stealing anybody's information. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a random number with a random number generator and line that up with the email. And that's how we're going to find out who wins. So you're going to have to wait till later on in the video to find out. But I'm going to announce it in today's video. The chickens are finally starting to up their egg work. We're getting anywhere from five to eight eggs a day right now. Can I give it to the chickens? Before we go outside, let's check on our celery. We got it under the grow light. It is doing awesome. I am excited for that. Curious to see how it keeps on growing. But it's looking good so far. The concrete countertop, I got video I'm gonna be putting out on this. It's just about finished. I got one more top coat I gotta put on and then we can install it. It is looking amazing. Gina's crate project's coming along. We got one more step to do on that. Let's check and see what the temp is in the root cellar this morning. We're at 32, awesome. We have our sauerkraut in here. That's all ready and done, we're just keeping it cold. The meats are looking delicious as usual. Potatoes are doing good. Every time I walk in and see them, I just keep thinking about the April three day pasture to plate hog culinary class we're gonna be doing here. It excites me. Then here are our potatoes. If you haven't seen the video on the potatoes, I'll put a link to that video right here. You're always wanting in there, huh? Oh, you're hiding over there this time? What? You think I was gonna leave the door open for you? You want to go outside, Pluto? Come on. Go upstairs. Let's see what we have for food for the pigs. Oh, we got some scraps in there. Bring that out for them. I started a nice loaf of bread this morning. That will cook up tonight. We'll have fresh bread for the rest of the week. Another nice loaf. If you haven't seen the video we did on making our bread, I'll put a link to that video right here. But I really love this recipe because it's so quick and easy. It takes sitting around time or idle time. But like for me, I can make it first thing in the morning when we get up, let it sit, it'll sit all day, and I can cook it tonight. And literally, it took me two minutes to get that ball of dough going. It's super simple, but it's delicious. This is what's left so far of our loaf we cooked up for us on Sunday. Uh, 
Are you going to jump up in the window, Figaro, when we go outside and keep an eye on us? Huh? I bet you will. Good morning, Mr. Biggs. Find anything good over there, Pluto? No? We just got about six inches of snow the other day and later on today we're supposed to be getting about a foot. Should be interesting. You girls look nice and warm in there. Good morning. Got some more food for you. You sleepy this morning? Huh? Yeah, you were sleeping in. I don't blame you. Get the pigs their leftovers and what do you think? I think you're crazy. Here's Figaro keeping an eye on us. Yeah, you missed her. Good morning. I know, we just said that a minute ago, but I got some food for you now. Ready? Got some good stuff. Yep. They'll appreciate that. When I was plowing all the snow the other day, I was like, man, this snowbank is getting so big! I mean, let's get up there. Look how deep it is. It's from here way back to there. 
I mean, it's huge. That's what happens here in northern New Hampshire. And we've had rain and so that's all ice. That's just a rock. There ain't no push in that. That had me thinking about positioning your buildings and why we positioned our outdoor kitchen where we did and the way we did. And I am very thankful we did. Coming up the driveway is off to the right at an angle. So the sun hits it nicely and it just fits the land nicely. But you know, we first thought about the kitchen there and then I was like, no, cause then where are we gonna dump our snow? And not just that, if we do it, we're gonna have to back drag in front of it or it's gonna be a pain in the butt. Kind of like listening to my roosters right now. Crazy animals, I tell you. So we positioned it over there for plowing reasons and positioning with the sun and I am glad we put it there and we set it up far enough because I wanted to make sure we had enough room to put the snow. If we would have set the outdoor kitchen back here, we would have been in trouble with our snow banks right now. So even though their snow banks are encroaching on the outdoor kitchen, we should be in a good place. So when we're building other well, structures, greenhouses, chicken coops, gardens, garden beds, driveways, any of that stuff, we need to be thinking of all aspects of it. For me, I'm always thinking functional. I'm more worried about how is this going to function and is it easy to function and it's not gonna make my life a pain and do it that way. Because stuff looks nice on paper, but in real life it comes down to does it work well? And that's what I think more towards and it makes our life easier in the long run. So just try to always be thinking a few steps ahead it doesn't happen overnight. We live and learn and just keep living and learning from all of our experiences and mash them all together and we get better and better as time goes on. Come on, down. The weather station is working nice today. We haven't had any wind. I like seeing the wind and what the wind peak was for that this day so far. Looking good. I think it's time to put away the chick brooder for now. We got a couple more weeks before the chicks come in. We know it works well. Here's my suit that I wear, that I've been wearing to work this winter. Keeps you nice and warm. So to store the chick brooder is very simple. We're gonna take out all of our equipment. One of the other nice features about the five gallon bucket water is when we're not using it, we can store the feeder in it. Fits in there perfectly. The waterer and all the other things we need. And then put the lid back on here. Then we know that's all in one place. What do you think? This is your chick brooder. This was built because of you to keep you out. And the same thing with the light. Lower it down. You know what, I can also keep my duplex nails in the five gallon pail. If you haven't seen the video on how we build the chick brooder or we set it up, I'll put a link to those videos right here. But the duplex nails keep the top from sliding all over the place or from Figaro pushing it off. And it's simple. I'll stick all them right in here. And this way when we go to put it back together, Everything will be in the same spot. Only if. Oh, so close. So close. So we've had a few comments about the plastic hinges. Like, I'm not going to use plastic hinges. I'm going to use the metal one. That's fine. 
And how are you going to store it? Let me show you a great feature about the plastic hinges. You ready for this? I don't know if you are. Look how flat that lies. For storage, that's awesome. I'm going to keep the one with the eye bolt on the outside. So when this is all stored together, it's only three and a half inches thick, maybe three and three quarters of an inch because you figure the hardware cloth. So if you had a three and a half inch long screw, you could screw it through all six pieces. I would do it right between the hardware cloth or the chicken wire so you're not drilling into the pine boards of the door frames. And do two of them, one, two, three or four. But I can't use screws. We love our ratchet straps. And we were just sent some pink ratchet straps. Thanks, Bill. I love this color. I'm sorry. This color is great. I'm going to use one of our new ratchet straps to hold our chick brooder together. That's a Pretty color, pretty bright too. And now it'll store out of our way until we need it. That's gonna be awesome when we're all done growing our chicks this spring, summer, whenever we're not using it, we take it apart, store it, and it takes up like no space. Thanks for coming along on the Friday Modern Stetter update. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, now's a great time to hit that subscribe button. And while you're down there, ring the bell. That'll turn on notifications. And hopefully, YouTube will let you know every time we upload a video, go live, or post a comment on the community tab. They're not always so good with that. So if you really want to stay connected with Lumna Acres, you can go over to lumnaacres.com. There's a link for our website in the description down below. And I'll put one right here. Sign up for the newsletter. You can stay up to date with everything we're doing over here at Lumna Acres. We'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye. He's always keeping an eye on us. Huh. Yeah, you. You ready, Olivia? Yeah. You're going to hit the, net, the button. Hold on. Get him focused. All right. Go for it. 509. All right, hold on. You're gonna find 509. It's Aaron Fairfax from California that won the chicken plucker. Congratulations, Aaron. Get in contact with us. Go to our about page and my email address is there or you can go to our website and contact us that way. Get in touch with us so that way we can send you out the chicken plucker. Congratulations. So you have three days to contact us so we can send out the plucker. If we don't hear from you, we're gonna be picking another modern stetter for the chance to win. But right now, Olivia's gonna hit two more times to find out two lucky winners who win Lumna Acre t-shirts. Okay. Go for it. 817. The first winner for one of the t-shirts is Tamara Pitchford. If you can contact us too, that would be awesome. So we can get all your information about what size you are, what color shirt you want, and where you want it mailed to. Ready to pick one more number? Yeah. 571. 571. Last t-shirt. And the last winner is Karen Cole. You all have three days to get in contact with us. When we hear from you, we'll get all your information so we can get the orders in for the shirts and then we can mail out the chicken plucker. Thanks everybody for entering and thanks for helping us hit 20,000 modern steaders.